Kim's on her way. All right, I'm calling this to order. Hello. All right, so uh, roll call. Do you need a roll call, or do you have that? No, Gene is not here either. Gene Andrews. At the moment, maybe he'll come later. Um, okay, so we have the minutes from last month in front of us. Do we have any uh, a motion to approve the minutes or any changes to the minutes? Which I actually should have asked if you had any changes first. Changes. No changes? Is there a motion to approve? Second? Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's the same tie, so we can see. All right. This is a good practice session for us. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So um, items from staff. Kim, can you catch us up with what's going on in the arts world in Alpharetta? So I'll just give a highlight, and if you have any questions about anything, I'm just kind of touching base on things that have been going on. Uh, we just have, at the Art Center, we have our new gallery show, and it's, we just took down Michael Dillon's show. It was wonderful. We had a great turnout, great response, and what was neat about his show is you could touch, every, touch a lot of things, and that was really, we had an interactive table. Right now, we just finished our open call, and we just put the show up for Let's Face It. And it's a, po a portrait exhibit, and it's really pretty cool. It's really neat, so please come by and see it. Is, am I not talking? Can you hear me better there? Yes. Okay. I thought it usually picked up a little further away. Okay. Uh, Kim, my understanding is that there are artists from all over the country that submit it, which is awesome. We actually got a lot of entries from California, and it really, this is probably one of, one of our furthest reach shows that we've had at the Art Center. So pretty it, neat. I urge everybody to go see it. I had a sneak peek on Saturday. It's awesome. Really, really cool. And we actually, in the studio gallery, which is also at the Art Center, we just put up another show today, and that's Charles uh, Perman. And uh, a little bit, I don't know a lot about him. I'm just learning. I just met him today. But our uh, gallery coordinator, Nancy, she has worked with him, and he has a story about every piece of art. So he's typing that up and getting that up on the wall. We, uh, in music, I just wanted to let you know that Forge and Flourish was very successful in June. I just thought it was good to know about our music initiatives. It's a week-long contemporary music festival. I think I've mentioned it to you before. But what's neat about it is it, it targets our teenagers. It's really hard to target that age group and for, in music and keep them active. So we had professors from other universities. We flew them in. And we worked with a partner here, and they created their own music. Wow. That so was pretty neat. And then they played around town, and we had a concert at the Art Center. Fantastic. Also, in Music Match. Excuse which, me, Kim. Um, how come I don't know about this? <laughs> I, I live and work down here. Where, where would you find this information? We, uh, we put it into the guide when we're doing things. We actually put it on uh, online, and we're currently working on updating the website and doing a calendar, which I hope to launch, when do you think? I don't know, September? Uh, so Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I almost didn't go to the mic, and Ellie would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So we're currently working with Kim on redesigning the, um, the cultural arts section of the website. It'll be much more robust than it is currently. Um, she's given us a lot of information um, and she's working on uh, going through some imagery right now um, and finalizing a little bit of language. It'll probably take us, I'm gonna say two weeks on, you know, once we have everything compiled uh, to fully build everything out. Um, the one piece that will um, be delayed, um, and, and it's, it's got to do with um, how we have to go about coding the site to be able to take an entire Instagram feed and embed that onto a page. It's a little different than it is for Facebook or Twitter. Those are easy. Um, Instagram, for whatever reason, functions differently with the CMS that runs our site. But the plan is that you would have their Instagram feed um, at the base of each page. But um, one of the things we'll be able to do um, with her section of the site now is she will have a calendar that is dedicated to cultural arts activities, um, which right now you kind of have to hunt for. right? Mm -hmm. um, but we, we can be a bit more granular. Uh, we think that's going to help. Uh, them a lot, and then they are putting a lot of energy and uh, and talent into their Instagram. That seems to be working very well for them. Um, so the web the web redesign um, is kind of the the base. The way we tend to do digital marketing marketing, you start with that with that web design, um, and that's your anchor, and then you drive everything towards that. Um, and they'll be, you know, leveraging Instagram and other other features for that. So their marketing will be uh, getting uh, much more robust here shortly. Uh, but admittedly, it has been a struggle uh, to to kind of unbury the cultural arts aspects from some of the other uh, you know things the city has going on. So that's something we're working very closely on. Fortunately, Kim and I have worked together a long time. So, <laughs> uh, Do you use uh, media at all, Appen or other? We, we tend not to use um, print advertising as much. Um, when we do, it tends to be for very key things. Uh, but, you know, one of, the, one of the things that Kim is educating me on, um, you know, for a lot of our other recreation and parks activities, we're able to, you know, okay, here's a quarterly uh, look ahead, right? With them, it's a little tougher uh, to do that. There's some challenges there um, in terms of their ability to uh, kind of nail down artists and, and things like that. And you can right. See I mean, that. our instructors don't know if they can teach next March but a baseball association knows what they're gonna be doing. So recreation operates on a different timeline than what the arts and culture timeline is. So we're having to make some adjustments in, in the way we approach marketing, but it does tend to lend itself, both their audience and uh, kind of the, the structure and fluidity of their programming, lend itself more to a digital environment, which tends to work extremely well in Alpharetta. Um, we do have to make some adjustments um, to, to be better positioned for a youth market. Um, you know, every social media platform has its, its uh, demographic. Social media is certainly no different. And um, so we have, to, we have to work on the targeting of that. But there's, there's a lot going on there right now in terms of how we're gonna position and sell what Kim and her team are doing because they're doing some great stuff. Yeah. Is, is there a digital um, newsletter? Yes. Is there somewhere to, we can, I can sign up for? We don't have one currently for the arts. Um, it is something that we've got them set up um, that, they, that they can do. Um, they've started putting together, well, they were positioning it to launch and then COVID hit. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of put a stop to things. So that has to get spun back up. Um, but they had begun uh, building their distribution network for that. Um, much like the city's weekly newsletter that we do, it takes time to build those things. Um, but, you know, it is something that they were positioning themselves for, and they'll pick back up. Thank you.
Thank you, and I think that's a really good question, Matthew. In fact, I, I've asked uh, Kim to every meeting come to us with what's happening because I think we're the advocates for what's going on in the arts and it's really important for us to know as well. So when you hear about these things, help spread the word, okay? Thank you. And this program, just so you know, it was a uh, grant program and we had a really good partner, Nathan Hudson, who, who actually, we wrote the grant with him and we, it was funded. We, we really need good partners to do programs like this because we can't be experts in all the fields like that, so. Do, uh, Kim, do you have any kind of numbers you can share with us about participation? Or is it too early? You're talking about in Forge and Flourish? Yeah. We had 20 participants in a week-long uh, camp, which for the first year we, we were very pleased with. Excellent. So. Okay. And I know I saw it somewhere on social media. I wish I could figure out where it was. <laughs> but there, I do have trouble navigating them, because I know like there's the Alch Alpharetta, then there's the Art Center, and there's, there's a couple of different ones. It sounds like that's what y'all are working on and trying to find a way that you just look up one. I actually think I might have even seen it on Next Door Alpharetta. Possibly. It was right. one of the ones, probably somebody participating posted they were going, and then I saw, I looked at it. So anyway. Yeah, that's part of our partnership is we ask them to tag us and help us push that out too. So Music Match, and that's, uh, a, that's our program that we do around town where we match businesses up with musicians and that program we're just paused right now we're waiting on the new grant money I mean we're still going to continue it but we're going to activate it again in August so right now we're in our planning month and then we'll activate it this coming fall the summer camps art center update have gone extremely well we've been filled and it's really it's been a great it's if you can stop by and see the camps it's a lot of energy with the kids. It just feels really great in there. We had Camp Creative, which is an all-day camp, and it's we've had six, no, we've had eight weeks of that. So I think we've just finished, we just finished that last week. This week we're doing Movie Star Camp, and then next week we have uh, Rock Band Camp, and we have some other half-day camps filled in there. Um, what you see here is our sewing camp that we had, it was two weeks ago, and that was very successful. Um, we also do uh, art studio in the go-go, which we've been doing about three of those a week. And the instructor, she just looks up the weather, shows up in the morning, says, I'm going out. And that's really how it happens. And it's really fluid and just easy. And she just picks a spot. So, but um, we love that one. The Art Center application, we are doing a rent, we just revised our rental application and we defined the use of the space a little bit better. People can rent the black box, they can do podcasts. We've kind of broken it up. If you want to rent the terrace and do a concert outside, you can do that. So that's, that's being activated as of this week. I just sent it out for the first time. Uh, we, I'm sorry. That's okay, go ahead. Um, is the facility available only for art-related events? We, they will get first use just because we want a art-related event or podcast in the black box. If, it's a, if someone's trying to use it for next week and say um, they just want a meeting, we'll go ahead and do that, but we wouldn't book that six months out. Public art, we are still trying to find out some more information on the A sculpture. We know it looks horrible, so please support us on that. We're trying to work on that. Um, we're, we have uh, waiting on Sam Thomas legal to, to get some information back to us on that. It's on basically city property, and we're waiting to hear about where that maintenance is right now. So I'll give you an update when I know more. The feather, I don't know if you're familiar, are you familiar with the feather in front of La Casa? They're trying to add the sculpture on to the, uh, to the permanent collection. Uh, right now it's leaning in that direction and uh, they is Arts Alpharetta. They're looking into that and I'll let you know more about that, but th that may be a part of our permanent collection. In the history realm, um, we have a draft that we're working on for our MOU, which is a Memorandum of Understanding. And what that entails is working with, um, our, it's working with the Alfred and Old Milton County Historical Society. They have the Mansell House, which they rent, and that's in Wills Park. They actually, we have the log cabin. 
the city owns both of those structures, but they actually oversee some of the use of the structures and they maintain some of those. The archives, which is our, um, basically where we have our museum software, Past Perfect, mm -hmm. and all of our research, if a um, company wanted to know, the Hamilton wanted to know their history over here. So they got onto Zoom and they did a lot of research and looked in Past Perfect. So we help out a, we, I don't do that, but they do that. They do a lot of research with um, the Historical Society, Alfreda and Old Milton Historical Society. So we're working on that MOU, which is just an agreement on how we partner on those areas. Mm -hmm. So we have not had a revised one in a little while, and we've added on the log cabin. Excuse me, um, Kim, isn't there another farmhouse that they're working on too? It's like over by 400? That's correct. That's a that's not a part of this oh, it memorandum? Is? No, that's okay. not. Um, if anything, in the future, I'm not involved in all that right now, but if anything, um, what would happen is the Historical Society might give us, if they did an interpretive park or something, they would help support us with historical content and text for that for that. Who would, so does the Historical Society buy those properties or the city of Alpharetta does, or they propose that? Just curious how it works. So let me, let me take that question. The, the property, that we're, when we talk about a farmhouse, there's not really a structure there. Right. It was just that was what the settlement was called. So the city now has the property, okay. owns the property. It was deeded, it was given to us by a developer, um, a, as well as we got some right away when uh, Georgia 400. So we own the property where the farmhouse settlement was. was. Okay. And so there is now the uh, folks that want to develop it, get trails down there and develop it and, and make it a historical heritage park. And it's gonna be included in the bond referendum coming up in November of this year. Okay. One of the line items on that bond referendum is for the development, for the planning and, de and first phase development of the farmhouse. Okay, thank so you. So that will just depend on the, on the bond referendum as to whether we move forward with that or not. Okay, thank you. All right. While I'm here, can I can okay. I can I update on a couple of things since we're talking about music? Just want to give you an update on Wirenwood. Wirenwood, oh, yeah. which is a singer songwriter festival, is coming back this year. Ooh. It's gonna be the second weekend of October. I think that's the eighth and the ninth, but don't quote me on that. Uh, Friday and Saturday night. Uh, right now we have we're gonna have six uh, stages, um, outside stages, um, and uh, there'll be there's going to be, uh, so we, uh, let me run through them. Uh, Brook Street Park is going to be a main stage. And then the formal gardens between here and the library is a uh, secondary uh, stage. There's going to be a main stage on Town Green where the fountain is. And then the secondary stage there is going to be right in front of um, Central City Tavern, the little green area there. And then on the west side of 400, west side of, 400, west side of Highway 9, uh, the main stage is going to be on uh, Milton Avenue, and then the secondary stage is going to be back behind, currently going to be behind the hotel. Um, I don't know if you've been there, but we've cleared that. That area has been cleared out, um, been uh, bush hogged and cleared out, so we're going to be putting a stage back there. So that's where the six stages are go, going to go, and there'll be a total of 30 artists, artists, 30 artists <laughs> performing on those six stage overs the two nights. In addition to that, this year in Wirenwood, we're going to we're going to partner with our uh, music match uh, partners, and we're going to have some music on the inside of some of the places that we've had music match at. So, kind of add to the to the amount of music that's going to be happening that's that good, this yeah. weekend. We do have two headliners. Uh, our Friday night headliner is Ruthie Foster, um, just a phenomenal singer songwriter. And then Saturday night we have Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors, which will be the the headliners. And in the singer-songwriter, who was on Saturday? Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors. And in the singer-songwriter uh, world, uh, Drew Holcomb is a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, so he has a very large regional following. So uh, we expect a large crowd for that on Saturday night. So both of those will be playing. Those are the two that'll be playing on the Milton, on the main stage on Milton Avenue. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, when you, um, I'm sorry. Uh, when you. Um, mentioned the hotel, uh, behind the hotel. Are you talking about the street or are you talking about their uh, little common well, area? It's actually not on the hotel property. It's, it's, uh, it's actually on private property 
uh, between there and that the building that sits at the corner of Old. And that parking and, st spot. Uh, yeah, where kind of where they're where they have that gravel lot there right, right in there because that's not really hotel some of that most of that's not hotel property it was just an easement so that's really if you know where that gravel is and where that container sitting right now on that gravel that's about where we're going to have the stage right. over there thank you okay All right and one other thing um i said i didn't have anything but here i am talking <laughs> um uh, kim mentioned the idea of maybe coming by the camps um, and you're welcome to do that but on thursday this thursday at one o'clock and i know a short notice I'm giving a camp tour for the Recreation Commission. So we're gonna go and see in our athletic camps, all of our day camps, the art camps, and our special needs camp, which is Camp Happy Heart. You're welcome to come. Uh, we're gonna be leaving at one o'clock. I'll uh, be leaving at, uh, be meeting at the Community Activity Community Center at one o'clock on Thursday. So if you wanna go on a tour and see how all of our camps, I mean, this is, we're gonna be talking with the kids and interfacing with the kids is something we try to do once a year uh, to remind ourselves, you know, kind of what the final product of the things that we're doing. So one of the, bit, one of the stops we're gonna make is the art center though. So you're welcome to come along for the whole tour or just join us at the art center. Awesome. Any other questions? Thanks, Morgan. Um, the last thing on the list is the log cabin grand opening. The historical societies had a grand opening planned in 2020. The historical society had a grand opening planned in 2020, and of course they didn't do it. So now they're actually, they'll do it sometime in October. I'll send you an email or I'll tell you in the next meeting, but just kind of have that on. I think it's the third weekend is what they're looking at right now. But if you haven't seen the inside of the cabin, it's a great time to come and look at it. We actually did three weeks of living history camp there, we activated the cabin, and we're going to start doing more classes in the cabin too through our partnership. So, so cute. Awesome. Any questions or anything? Thank you, Kim. That sounds You're great. Welcome. All right. Um, Morgan, that's all you had to say? Perfect. Okay. Um, and we have no one here from the public, so I guess we have no public comments. All right. So we're going to move forward to the unfinished business section, which has to do with the ARIA mural. But before we can go much farther, we have to have a motion, because we tabled it, to say that we are point, point of order, removing... Matthew. Um, e even, Matthew, are you planning on making any comments or presentation on this item? No. Okay. In that case, I'm going to need to ask you to recuse yourself and leave the room uh, prior to the tabling. <laughs> are there refreshments back there? I, I, will be, I will join you in just a second. I'll show you where, where they are. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I hope everyone had an opportunity to go back and look at the, uh, did you all have a chance to? Yes. Um, and actually, I wish James would come back in here because I have some clarification I need. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, so I motion to um, discuss it and to take off the tabling of it, however you say that. <laughs> Remove it from the table. That's basically just saying. Remove it from it the table. Like so we have it's a, off the table then. All right. And we have a second here with Michael. Okay. Excellent. And so now do we have to say a motion? Okay. Do we all agree to remove what we discussed last month off? Okay. Excellent. All right. Next. Okay. So do we need, can we discuss it before we make a motion? I believe. Kim, you had some information to present on this? Or did that happen while I was out I of I can just get them updated with where, what we've, what we've gone through since the last meeting. Okay. Is that that here? Um, Matt, the ARIA, they resubmitted the rendering, which was requested by Arts Alpharetta and by the commission. So this was the new rendering that showed the mural that was closer to the ground. And the height of it will not exceed heated measurements coming along here and the top is where the uh, top of the railing is at the hotel so it wouldn't exceed that so it's a ground level mural which was requested 
And this is the wraparound, and he is actually uh, working with Arts Alpharetta trying to get some support for the wraparound and funding. They're trying to do the entire mural, the back wall and the wraparound. So what we had, uh, when we had the review with Arts Alpharetta, we had requested that he submits the new images, which he's done, and also that he gives a maintenance uh, kit. The artist turned in the maintenance kit to us. Um, there's a few questions in the maintenance kit that we need to clarify, but for the most part, it, it, it gives us the details that we need. So there's a few things, like we want the exact paint colors, but he gives the ranges of how often you'd have to repaint and the cost associated with that. Okay, well, I have some just general other questions too about the, the site. Do we have to have a motion before I do all this? No, 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 okay. no. Perfect, okay. No, 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 this is, this is Q&A, you're doing fine. Okay, Q&A, all right. So my understanding is that the Matthew's property line ends right where his, the wall does. He only goes out about two, three inches maybe. Uh -huh. All right, so that the city owns the property behind it and the city owns the property around the side of it, correct? It's not completely accurate. Okay. Um, so if you look at the image that Kim has put on display, mm -hmm. um, the, the area immediately behind his building and, and specifically the, the area where you had, had uh, posed the question about the, mm -hmm. the trees that have been planted, that's actually hotel property. It's not the city's property. We do have an easement um, that is adjacent to uh, those trees, it kind of runs through that area um, to connect to some other city property so that we have this continuous flow uh, through there. Um, but that area is actually hotel property. So you're saying that, that uh, just to clarify for those of you who didn't notice, but there's a river birch mm -hmm. on one side and there's a pin oak on the other side. Those are both fast growing trees mm -hmm. with large canopies. So they're going to cover up that mural in particular, unless they're kept pruned up, uh, mm -hmm. and even then they're trunks. And if you know, the multi-branched um, uh, river birches, right, usually on the lower edge of so it. I have some concerns. So you're, telling, you're saying that the, that is actually owned by the hotel? The, the trees are owned by the hotel. They were planted okay. there uh, specifically by the hotel. Um, they, they have some concerns with respect to you know, ha having that wall there, um, you know, they, they feel the wall detracts from mm -hmm. their, their courtyard. So they, they planted those trees. Um, now, one thing that I don't know that we necessarily made clear, and this kind of gets into another question that had come up. Um, so when this item went to the design review board, um, the original concept was that there would be stucco applied to this rear wall. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to I'm going to refer to them as the applicant just to keep things clean. Mm -hmm. um, so the applicant uh, in the case um, proposed a mural instead of the stucco. The stucco is actually preferred by the design review board um, and by our community development staff. Um, but I do know that the applicant has for a number of years, um, Kim, what, two or three? About three years. So. Uh, about three years um, has has had some interest in having a mural on that rear wall, okay. um, but just to to clarify, the way the condition was written, um, if if the commission feels that this is not an appropriate location for the mural, um, or for whatever reason you choose not to approve the mural, then what would happen is he would either have to uh, apply stucco to the wall, um, or he would have to go back to the design review board to seek other options. Um, so um, well, there, there are some options there, but those trees uh, being there, the city does not have the ability to compel the property owner to remove those trees or to prune them in any given way unless they are posing a threat or, or causing damage to an adjoining property. I, I see, okay, that changes it because I know the other thing that I was thinking about was having access to the mural because we talked about it as you know people wanting to take photos in front of mm -hmm. it and I assume that the city would have 
you know, some sort of a pathway to it. And obviously, if it's a hotel property, that's not going to happen. So, well, uh, maybe not obviously. Kim would probably be able to better answer the specific location of the easement and the pathway that the city has. Um, Kim's been very involved with this. Okay. Um, you know, working through with our code enforcement staff, et cetera. I know some of the plans, the rendering show that, that we looked at that were a little bit more detailed. You can tell coming up to this direction here, but this is a rendering. So they're still working out some of those logistics right now. They've just cleared out the space. So, mm -hmm. you know, I can't, I can't tell you exactly how that's going to lay out, but I know the intent was to have some seating and have it be a, public area there is a crosswalk where does that go through here it's right through here mm -hmm. going from this street all the way through so you'll be able to see the mural from there or from the street here you should be able to but we don't know what will be built in this well, area either we know that like where they're showing on this rendering four trees the one that's the the one at the top of the page is actually a giant transformer box mm -hmm. so it's not mm -hmm. a tree. right and then over where the little orange spot is, is about where there's a, a manhole cover, right? Mm, right. So it's hard to imagine that they're going to put a bench in there. I, and the other is um, the, the request was to have it to wrap around, and um, it would go right behind two HVAC, HVAC units. And it's drawing attention to something that isn't very attractive, in my opinion. But I don't know uh, anybody else had noticed that. And there's also, it says fire door over here. Now, a little bit of it coming around could grab your attention, but I think going fully behind it, um, and I noticed Matthew, has, or the applicant has given us two renderings. So uh, that's just one observation, um, too, that I made with it. So I, I hear what you're saying. Um, you know, if he wants to do the mural, as you know, the pin oak will, you know, the base of it should go up. It's probably more an issue of the, um, the, birch. the birch, and the birch is on the farther side of the... Yeah, it's more on this part of the hair. So. Madam Chair, I'm, s I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, <laughs> this is where I'm going to get you on procedure again. I'm okay, sorry. thank you. Um, but right now we're still kind of in Q and A. Okay. Um, so what you're starting to engage in is is a bit of discussion. I got you. Okay. Um, so for that, we would need a motion before we can entertain that. Excellent. Okay. So those were some clarifications that I needed. Did anybody else have some clarifications before we get a motion? Um, I anything? Had a Thank you. Is that the easement, my understanding is, is that the easement that's coming from Old Canton that's going to come all the way through to the corner mm -hmm. is pretty much a straight easement mm -hmm. through this property. So I don't, and that's all we have is an easement. Correct. You know, from one end to mm -hmm. the other. So there isn't, even though this drawing might show that there is a connection in the fence, we'd have to get approval from the hotel and all like that. So the only thing that we know we're going to have is that easement and it mm -hmm. has an alleyway. It's the only thing we can commit to because that's the only thing we have in writing that says we can do that. Okay. So it may that mean that it could, it could still look like that, but that would be up to the hotel as to what they wanted to do. If maintenance is required on the mural and we only have two to three inches, we're going to need approval from the hotel to have the maintenance done. <sighs> The more, more than likely, um, you would have to have um, you would have to have an allowance from uh, the hotel for the mural to be maintained. Now, you'd have to have the same uh, allowance from the hotel for him to maintain if that wall was painted stuck, you know, if it was stucco or painted blue or whatever. Um, and and honestly, it's it's rare that you would not get a maintenance allowance from from an adjoining property owner because it's in their best interest to allow it as long as the hotel likes it correct and they like us right now so they like us or they like it they like us right now oh i it. think <laughs> that, that mural went that i think i think getting a maintenance uh, easement or an easement or a maintenance access yes would be would be easy it's it's basically a temporary easement um, right but I, I think uh, to, to uh, uh, the tool point that was made earlier 
with the, the electrical box and the air conditioning, I'm not sure they're going to want to have a bench or create a space there to call attention to it too. So that's why I want to make sure that, that, that this rendering shows that, but really the only thing we know is going to be is that, is that an alleyway access through there. Okay. Okay. Any other clarifications? Go ahead. I, I was just going to make a comment, which is this is street art. We, mm -hmm. we can call it murals, but it is pure street art. And if you look at any other city on the planet that encourages street art, you have the, the, the uh, things in a city that are important to have the city run. Mm -hmm. So I, I think trash cans and street lights and air compressors are just kind of things that we have to work around. I agree. I, even in the rendering, it doesn't show there's two windows on the wall. Yeah. So yeah. it's a part of it. All right, um, so we're starting to get into discussion, as I can see James blinking at me. So does somebody want to make a motion about this, uh, the mural? So the motion would be, I guess, that we approve the mural? Um, well, or I'm not going to tell you what but, uh, uh, if your, somebody your motion wants to should this? be. I can tell you that your options, your options, options thank you. Um, your options would be to uh, offer a motion to approve, uh, offer a motion to deny, or offer a motion to approve with some conditions placed upon said approval. Okay. All right. I just have a question about the, um, the mural itself. That we were talking about, is it going to be at the ground level or eight feet above? What happened to that? Oh. Uh, or what did I, but, I may have missed that. Okay. Do you want me to or go ahead? You can, you can go ahead if you want. The, the problem is the canopies of the trees, if it's up too high, it'll hide it. So uh -huh. worth it. But also it's, low, it'll hide it. So right. And the, the trunks would be less. Well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Good point. Good point. Mm. Okay. Do we have a motion to um, uh, on this particular issue? I, I made an, a motion to approve. Okay. Any second? Are we going to motion to approve with? Well, then we have discussion. We have Sorry. a discussion. So, do we have a uh, second? I'll second. Okay, so we have it on, on here. So the um, discussion, I guess the question which we were getting into it, um, you have raised is, is it below or is it higher? Uh, my inclination personally is because of the canopies fuller up at the top that it makes more sense to have it more at ground level. But does anybody else have any thoughts on that? I agree also because I think the whole point was to cover that lower wall um, which was supposed to be stuccoed. The upper wall is, um, there's some sort of siding on it and um, it's finished out with a patio, et cetera. It makes sense to me to put it lower mm -hmm. and be a part of the city streetscape, like you said. Yeah, and I agree with uh, Michael's comment about this is street art and you see street art like this, you know, with, like you said, with the trash cans, this has got two, you know, water pipes coming out of it and it's got funky windows, which hopefully will be worked into the, to the cheek or something fun. So um, I, I, I agree. I guess the second issue is whether we feel the wraparound or no wraparound, right? I would say that it should be um, the applicant's choice. I, it's fine with me if they want to add it, but if he doesn't, if he doesn't want to or doesn't get the grant money, then I think approved in the the first version is is fine. That's what I would think. You mean with just the fingers coming around, or yeah, just, just the, the fingers? Okay. Yes, just the fingers, mm -hmm. not the whole side. He doesn't have to do the whole side. Um. I, it's, I think the. Um, when you're talking about the one with the fingers around, the first one with the fingers ending at the corner, that's not even in here anymore, so. Uh, well, the very first one yeah, that yeah. presented one? last month, uh, the fingers ended here. at the corner, yeah. yeah. Okay. But now the two that are presented, they either go around the corner or they're the whole mm -hmm. um, yeah. perpendicular wall is covered with another mural almost. So I would go with the first version unless um, the applicant wants to do the second version. I'd, I'd point out that he will not do the second version if we give him the ability to do the first simply by virtue of cost. So I think we have to decide. decide. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. And I'm really kind of disinclined to the, the fuller one because of the um, HVAC units that it would be behind anyway. I thought he was only going to do the second one if he got a grant money. The fuller. So that's, I think that was discussed at one point. But yeah, I'm with you. The first one looks great to me. 
obviously the significance of this is to get other businesses to do the same thing. So I hope we have this on a routine basis of looking at additional art. And, and uh, at some point we need to make some protocols as to how we're going to approve these things. Absolutely. Right. Exactly. So if I could, so that we're clear on what the motion is, um, it is my understanding, and I will look to you and to you to confirm or deny. Um, the motion would be uh, to approve uh, the mural on the back of the 41 Milton Avenue property using the option of the mural being placed lower on the subject wall um, and the partial wrap uh, being the uh, recommended option that you're approving. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes? Except with the provision that the maintenance, that we wanted to be sure to have all of that contract finished. Okay, that was going to be my next question. Okay. Um, so um, we've got now basically the, the main form of your motion, and now things like the maintenance agreement, things like that, those become conditions. Okay. So um, you have a couple of options because that hasn't been stated thus far. Um, you can ask Michael if he would accept a friendly amendment to place a condition on the approval that the applicant must provide a, um, uh, a maintenance plan, um, um, a, a long-term maintenance plan uh, for the artwork, um, and that uh, an agreement must be secured with the adjoining property owner uh, for temporary access to execute that maintenance. That would, that sounds like what you're getting at. I don't want to put words in your mouth. That sounds, sounds like what perfect. you're getting at. I mean, I wrote down access and maintenance. That's okay. what I wanted. So if you would like, you can offer that as a friendly amendment. Michael would have the ability to say yay or nay. Um, so. I, 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 uh, I say yay, but I have a question for you, which mm -hmm. is I'm not familiar with, I'm familiar with maintenance bonds. Mm -hmm. Do you do a maintenance bond? Um, is that an option? You can certainly, um, you can certainly do that. Um, I mean, uh, basically it's a surety bond, right? Um, and a surety bond just basically has, it's an insurance policy. It's a fancy insurance policy. Um, so that if the maintenance is not uh, performed in accordance with the plan um, under certain conditions, the city would have the ability to perform said maintenance and call that bond, um, but it is an annual expense to the property owner yeah. uh, to maintain that. It is an insurance policy. But you can do it. I mean, we've... Has, has anybody ever done it? And I believe they're really inexpensive. Because the, the amount the amount of the bond is going to be minimal, right? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm throwing out a number, maybe twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, I, max. I really can't guide you on that because I've never tried I mean, to, to do it on something like this. But we bonded landscaping, all kinds of things. You know, Michael, I've, I've heard that when you're doing public art, you should um, set aside 5% of whatever you, or 10% of whatever you spent on it for your long-term maintenance. So if this cost him $5,000, we're talking $500. So I don't know that a bond would necessarily be worth it at that point. At that low a cost, he probably yeah. wouldn't even be able to get one. <laughs> okay. I, I think the key is that I would want to make sure that he is the one that maintains at his expense because if he was doing stucco, it would be no different than him having to mm -hmm. fix stucco or yeah. repaint if he wants to make this the substitute for a permanent fixture that he would be maintaining anyway. I don't want the public art to be right. funded by the public at that point. And that would be the nature of, of that maintenance agreement. It would stipulate, typically a maintenance agreement on something like this is going to stipulate exactly what maintenance is to be performed, on what routine schedule, on what condition, under what conditions additional maintenance may have to be performed if it's damaged, et cetera, and who the responsible parties are. This is um, 
this is the plan that the artist submitted to Matthew about how often it would need to be cleaned and potential repairs if there was graffiti or something done or that was damaged in some way. So the artist went through how often he recommended about every five years over the lifetime of the mural and he gave an estimated cost of about 500 to 1,000. And then in repairs, he gave a $50, excuse me, a $50 an hour rate to give it to do any repairs, which I thought was pretty mm. reasonable. Okay. And typically what the city would do is we would have the city attorney take a document like this, put it into the city's form, and it would be a, a, an agreement between the city and the, and the property owner, the applicant, um, that basically just spells this out. Perfect. Well, this is very helpful, I think. Yeah. Yes. That's good. Okay. All right, so our motion on the table is that we approve with no. the condition. And he accepted he it, accepted. so all that's good. Are we, do we have a motion? Has it already been accepted? You're, you're all good. Good. You're good. So we can now just vote? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you're finished discussing, you can vote. Is there any more discussion, anyone? All right, all mm -hmm. those in favor, say raise your hand. Right. Okay. Okay. So, all right, I'll go get Matthew. <laughs> Kim, I have a question. So, do we do? Will we end up doing a dedication when it's finished? And if so, because obviously this is the the start of something pretty cool, right? So you right. would want other businesses to go. Maybe I should be doing this as well. Right. So, you know, do we do a soft opening when it's finished? We can. Okay. We can do that, sure. And, and just invite the local people and say, you know, we're finished. And absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so um, Matthew, just to communicate what, his, uh, what the board has decided, um, the board approved uh, the mural um, on, your, on your facility. Uh, they approved the one that is lower on the wall with the partial wrap with just the fingers, um, conditioned upon two things. The first is that we have to um, get the um, maintenance uh, that you already uh, that you had outlined we just have to work with the city attorney get that into a, an agreement form uh, between you and the city it's easy um, and then um, getting assurance from the hotel that you will have the ability to um, to, to perform the maintenance through that easement I so, appreciate that. yeah so those are the those are the, the conditions um, but at this point you've got the approval pending uh, the signing of that agreement. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, do I uh, go forward with uh, uh, putting a contract together for, the, for this project? Will t um, when, you, when you say a contract, do you mean between you and the artist? Yes. Yeah, you could go ahead and do that. Um, our staff will work with the city attorney to put the um, maintenance agreement into the city's form. Uh, so that it's an agreement between you and the city, but yeah, you can go ahead and start working with the artist and nailing down the contract, scheduling, all that fun stuff. Great, thank you. So, James, so, yes, so they, just so you understand, they approved it just with the fingers around the edge, so they yeah. didn't approve the wraparound. So the the full wrap, yeah. yeah. Okay. And we'll, you've been through the design review board process. We'll get you something in writing so that you have that too. Thank you. You bet. I'll work on it tomorrow, Matthew. I'll tell you. Yep. So I want to follow up the, the, the question about the dedication. So Matthew, I want to offer that if you are interested, once you get it done, it will be your, obviously your mural, but we would love to participate in a dedication ceremony. Well, I, think it, I think it is, uh, it's, it's a big deal for the city for this to happen. I think it's a big deal for the, to be the first mural that the commission approved mm -hmm. as well. And I always like to make sure that everybody knows when we have a big win. So. We would like to, um, the staff would, and the commission would like to work with you on that dedication, make it as big a deal as we can, and uh, send a message that, you know, this is good stuff in the city of Alpharetta. So oh, we I think that would be a good idea. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else, or we'll move? I, you know, I'm not sure what busking is on here for. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I not that we don't. We do want it. I'm just not sure what the agenda item is supposed to be about. I apologize. We wanted to ask if we could get a committee together to start discussing mm -hmm. the process. So just to who would be want to be a part of that from the commission, and then bring in some staff and maybe anyone else that you would think that could, you know, contribute. I know I'm um, working with um, a lady that's actually done some of this work down in Decatur. She received, they received a grant and she did that for three years. So I, I would like to request that maybe she could be a part of the group. She had some really good ideas. I briefly spoke with her this past week. So if you want to be on a committee, we'd like to see how often you'd like to meet. Like, what, should we start once every two weeks or what's a good time? And, and I can arrange it and send out a, an invite. And, and you can have only a max of three from the commission, right? Because this would be something different. So we can't have everybody, so whoever might be interested. So, I mean, do you want comments now or do you want to just, um, yeah, anybody? Comments now would be great because oh, I, okay. could, I could start on it. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would like to be on that committee. I figured you would. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any other takers at this point? I think Sabine was really interested in it, but I'm not That's positive. What I, was trying to I thought Gene was Jean interested was. in yeah, it. Yeah, I think Gene yeah. was too. Yeah. I thought Gene was too. So I'll send an email and I'll ask, I'll kind of get do a poll and see what would be a good meeting time and how regular. And then I'll pull in a couple of staff and, and the lady I was mentioning. Okay. All right. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Okay. Any other new business that we know of, Kim, before you sit down? Oh. Any new business? Okay. Um, items from commissioner, commission members. Um, I just have one thing, and if just anybody else has. Just a. I thought that when we had the presentation from the Alpharetta Symphony and Orchestra, it was really wonderful to hear what they're doing and what their needs were. So I thought it would be helpful if, at our meetings, that we invite one of, a group or a person coming to come and tell us about what they're doing in the city and what their needs are. Maybe we can see some common. Threads. And one of which is I'd love to have Melody talk about First Act Theater, for example. Uh, first Act One. Act it's one. Act One. I'm sorry. Act One Theater. Um, so maybe at our next meeting, if, would that be? Would you be able to do that? Or how do you all feel about that? That's great. That's great. That'd be great. Okay. And we also have. Okay. So think about who you might. And, and Kim too said maybe there's some groups that she's working with that she could consider, so we can have a calendar of these different groups coming before us. You don't have to come up if you don't, unless you want to, huh? Yeah. 